In 1887, DC motors were added to a traveling crane to produce the world's first electric overhead crane, thus revolutionizing lifting technology. In 1955, a voluntary association of overhead crane manufacturers was formed. The Crane Manufacturers Association of America is now an independent trade association affiliated with the material handling industry. CMAA member companies have joined together as an industry association for the purpose of providing technical standards for mechanical, structural, and electrical design of cranes, as well as formulating guidelines for their proper use, safe operation, and maintenance. In addition to this videotape, the CMAA prepares, publishes, and distributes training, inspection, and maintenance materials that are available to all overhead crane users. This program is dedicated to the thousands of men and women who operate overhead cranes. Our objective is to provide fundamental information that will help you, the crane operator, perform your work safely and productively. Cranes are enormously useful, but they are also potentially dangerous if operated improperly or carelessly. Plant personnel usually work near areas where cranes lift and move loads, so it is no exaggeration to say life and limb depend on your skill and experience. You are responsible for operating the crane in accord with established safety practices. Like the captain of a ship, you are the captain of the crane. If you ever have doubts about the ability of a crane to make a lift safely because of concerns about maintenance, capacity, the stability of the load, or any factor, do not make the lift. Instead, contact your supervisor. As the captain of the crane, it is your judgment that counts when you are at the control. Only trained employees designated by management may operate a crane. Moreover, an experienced operator should never operate an unfamiliar crane in a work situation until he or she has read the instruction manuals provided by the crane manufacturer, has a clear understanding of how the controls work, and has practiced without a load in an area clear of personnel. Modern cranes come in many sizes and configurations to meet a wide range of applications. Although this program will concentrate on typical cab-operated and floor-operated overhead cranes, much of the information will apply to all kinds of cranes. We will talk about basic crane components, lifting attachments, controls, warnings, hand signals, pre-energization inspections, crane energization, proper lifting and transfer, and securing cranes at the end of the shift. Throughout the program, we will point out practices that decades of experience have shown to be effective in operating cranes safely. All overhead cranes have four primary components. The bridge, trolley, hoisting machinery, and controls. The bridge is built of girders that span the work bay. It supports the trolley and hoisting machinery and rides on rails that allow it to convey loads along the length of the work area. The trolley rides on rails that are mounted on the bridge. It moves left and right between the runway rails, conveying loads across the width of the work area. Emergency stops and bumpers installed at the ends of the bridge and trolley rails help prevent the bridge or the trolley from running off the rails. These are for emergencies only and must not be used to stop the crane routinely. The hoisting machinery raises and lowers the load. The lifting assembly is suspended from the trolley on wire rope. 
A hook or set of hooks is the most common lifting assembly. Magnets, buckets, grabs and vacuum attachments are among the optional lifting assemblies that are available. The control system allows the operator to maneuver the crane. In cab operated cranes, the controls are located in front of the operator for easy access. Cabs may be attached to the bridge or trolley and move along with the load. Or they may be stationary and separate from the crane. Stationary cabs are sometimes called pulpits. Cranes without cabs are maneuvered by controls that are operated from the floor. The operator walks along with the crane and directs its motions. Because of their proximity to the load, floor controlled crane operators must be extremely careful not to trip or place themselves or others in a potential pinch point between the load and another object. Floor operated controls come in three basic types, pendant, radial, and infrared. The pendant control is connected to the crane by a cable. The radio control communicates through radio transmissions. And the infrared control uses infrared light waves, much like a home television controller. Whether floor or cab controlled, the operator has the ability to control the crane's motions precisely. He or she can move the bridge, the trolley, and the hoist. The operator can also control the speed of the crane and apply the brakes. It is important to remember, however, that because the load is suspended, it will not necessarily stop exactly when you apply the brakes. For the same reason, it will not necessarily start moving exactly when you apply power. The pendulum action that may result if the crane is started or stopped too quickly is known as load swinging. Load swinging, a potentially hazardous condition, can be eliminated by moving the crane in the direction of the swing. The fact that each crane has its own starting and stopping characteristics emphasizes the requirement that operators be completely familiar with a particular crane's characteristics prior to operating the crane in a work situation. Your first duty as a crane operator is to ensure the safety of personnel. Everyone must be alerted before the crane is moved. A variety of warning devices such as bells, buzzers, sirens, horns, lights and beacons are available for this purpose. The warning device must be activated before the crane begins moving and whenever the load approaches people, crosswalks, roadways or other traffic areas. It is essential that plant personnel be aware of the potential hazards of cranes and that they be instructed to stay well away from the path of the load. In some plants, audible warnings are supplemented by a system of signal lights. These lights communicate conditions ranging from crane moving to crane parked. The meaning of the different light colors varies from plant to plant. If your plant uses signal lights, be sure to learn what they mean in your situation. Operators should not rely solely on warning devices to protect personnel. When the crane is operational, the crane operator is responsible for continually verifying that no personnel or objects are in danger of being struck. If an individual is too near the path of the load, the operator is required to bring the crane to a safe stop and then to make sure the individual is out of the load's path before continuing. On many job sites, cab crane operators work as a team with another employee known as the signal person. The signal person is often necessary because the operator cannot see the entire load and needs another pair of eyes to help assure safe operation. 
A standard set of hand signals has been devised for communications between the signal person and the cab crane operator. Only personnel who are able to demonstrate the hand signals without hesitation may serve as signal persons or crane operators. There are eight signals that apply to all cab cranes and a ninth that is used with magnetic attachments. The first rule of signaling is that the crane operator follow only the signals of the designated signal person. There are, however, two exceptions to the rule. The signals for stop and emergency stop must be heated regardless of the source. A routine stop is signaled by extending the arm straight out from the shoulder and holding the hand palm down. Emergency stop is signaled by placing the hand in the stop position and then moving it rapidly right and left. No matter who gives the stop or emergency stop signal, it must for good reason be obeyed by the operator. The remaining signals should be obeyed only when given by the designated signal person. The first, hoist, tells the operator to raise the load. This signal is made by bending the arm at the elbow to form an upward right angle and then pointing the forefinger straight up and rotating it. To signal lower, the arm is extended downward, slightly away from the side. The forefinger is pointed down and rotated. Bridge travel is communicated by facing in the direction of the desired movement, extending one arm forward and making a pushing motion in the direction of travel. Trolley travel, by contrast, is signaled by bending the arm at the elbow to form an upright V, making a palm-up fist and jabbing the extended thumb in the desired direction. Some cranes are equipped with two trolleys. The multiple trolley signal is used to tell the operator which to move. The signal person forms an upward pointing right angle with the arm and holds up one finger for the hoist nearest the operator and two fingers for the hoist farthest from the operator. The caution, move slowly, can be added to any signal by giving the signal with one hand and placing the other hand in front of it. The magnet is disconnected signal is given by extending both arms straight out from the sides and holding the hands palms up. Once again, the nine hand signals are stop, emergency stop, hoist, lower, bridge travel, trolley travel, multiple trolleys, magnet is disconnected. Move slowly can be added to any signal by placing the other hand in front of the signaling hand. Another vital aspect of safe crane operation is crane maintenance. Operators are generally not responsible for maintaining the crane, but they are required to perform an inspection each time they take the controls to assure the crane is fit for service. Any problems that are discovered should be reported to your supervisor or the appropriate maintenance personnel. In some cases, operators are required to complete and file a pre-operation inspection checklist each time they take control of a crane. Preliminary to the inspection, operators should check to see whether the previous crane operator reported anything unusual about the crane at the end of his or her shift. Prior to beginning the pre-operation checks on cab-controlled cranes, the operator should determine whether the main power switch is locked out. A locked out main power switch means the crane is being serviced or for another reason should not be operated. Never remove a lock from a locked out crane. Instead, determine who has locked out the crane and why before proceeding. If the main power switch is not locked out, make sure it is in the off position then lock it out and tag it before beginning the pre-energization inspection. 
For bays with multiple cranes, locate the power switch on the crane you will be inspecting. Turn it to off, lock it out, and tag it before beginning the inspection. The pre-energization inspection involves 11 steps. 1. Check all walkways, crane rails, and flat surfaces for tools and other loose objects. These could fall during the operation of the crane and create a hazard. Also check for oil or grease that might cause someone to slip and fall. 2. Check for loose or missing guards. 3. Open all cabinet doors and visually inspect to make sure all interior components are secure. Due to the presence of high voltage, do not touch anything inside the cabinets. Be sure to close the cabinet doors afterward. 4. Visually inspect the resistance bank cabinet for bad connections, dirt, or other foreign matter. 5. Visually inspect the collectors and conductors associated with the bridge and trolley to assure they are free of dirt and other contaminants that might cause poor electrical connections. Due to the presence of high voltage, do not touch the collectors and conductors. 6. If the crane is so equipped, check gearbox sight gauges to assure lubrication is at the proper levels. Also check for evidence of leaks. 7. If a festoon cable is used, make sure that the festoon trolleys move freely and that the cable is not detached from any carriers. In addition, verify that the control cables are intact and undamaged. 8. If accessible for inspection, check brake shoes to make sure they are not worn down to 1 16th of an inch or less. In addition, the brake drums should be inspected for smoothness. Always use a safety harness and tether while aboard the trolley. 9. Check all readily visible crane rails to make sure no grease, oil, or other foreign material is present. Any coating on the rails acts like snow or sand on a road and will impair the ability of the crane's braking system to stop the crane safely. 10. Inspect the wire rope for signs of damage such as kinks, broken strands, rust, or other corrosion and look for signs that the rope has been reduced in diameter due to stretching. 11. Check to see that the rope is properly wrapped on the hoist drum and not out of the grooves and that the lands have not been sharpened. The areas between the hoist drum grooves are called lands. If the crane has been operated improperly, for example if side pulling has occurred, these lands may be sharpened by the friction of the rope. Sharpened lands are a hazard because they could sever the rope and cause the load to fall. If any of the items on the checklist causes doubt in your mind as to the suitability of the crane for safe operation, notify your supervisor or a designated maintenance person. Never energize a crane unless you know it is fit for service. Because of restricted access to the upper portions of the crane, floor-controlled crane operators generally will not be able to perform the 11-point checklist recommended for use with cab cranes. Similar inspections should be performed by maintenance personnel. Floor-controlled crane operators, however, are responsible for performing the following checks prior to energizing the crane. Before beginning, Make sure the controls are in the off position. If the crane is operated by a pendant control, check to see that a sound chain or cord is in place in addition to the control cable. The chain or cord supports the weight of the pendant and keeps stress off of the control cable. Operating the pendant without this support could damage the cable and cause a loss of control. If the crane uses a remote control device, test the batteries to make sure they are properly charged. 
Some radio or infrared controlled cranes require that the operator put on a harness that holds the control. Before strapping on the harness, check to be sure the control key is in the off position and then inspect the harness carefully to assure all belts and buckles are sound and not likely to break while you are operating the crane. Frayed, damaged or worn out harnesses should be repaired or replaced. A number of additional inspections must be performed with the cab or floor controlled crane energized. Make sure the controls are in neutral and that the crane is in an area clear of personnel before moving the main power switch to the on position. Next, check the cab controllers to make sure they operate properly. This is particularly true of cranes equipped with so-called dead man controls. A dead man control is one that must be held in the on position by the operator to get a response from the crane. If the control is not held on, crane movement will cease. Never attempt to bypass these controls. They are designed to stop movement if the operator releases them accidentally. Floor controlled cranes are generally energized by inserting a key and turning the switch to the on position. If a harness is used, make sure it is properly fastened before turning the key on. With the cab crane or floor controlled crane energized, sound the alarms to ensure they are working. Then lower the hoist block so the hook or lifting attachment can be inspected for irregularities. Check the hook for signs of cracks, twisting of more than 10 degrees, or a throat opening that has increased by more than 15% from when the hook was new. The throat is the area between the point of the hook and the shank. In addition, if a safety latch, also called a mousing device, is used on the hook, check to make sure it is operating properly. Special attachments, such as buckets, should be checked to assure they are in good working condition and properly lubricated. If the hook or lifting mechanism is sound, perform the following additional inspections. First, check the hoist limit switch. When working properly, the hoist limit switch is designed to remove power from the hoist if the block is raised too high. After checking to make sure personnel are well away, test the hoist limit switch by raising the block without a load slowly toward the bridge. If the limit switch is working properly, it will turn the hoist off as the block nears the trolley. If the switch passes this test, lower the block and then raise it at full speed. Watch carefully. If the limit switch fails to operate, the block could contact the hoist drum causing damage. It is important to understand that limit switches are safety devices not operating controls. Limit switches should never be activated during normal operation. Next, check the hoist brakes by placing the control in neutral. Placing the control in neutral should stop the hoist motion. Then move the trolley to determine if it responds to commands properly and apply the trolley brakes to assure the trolley stops smoothly without sliding on the rails. If the trolley does not have brakes, reversing the direction of the controller should bring the trolley to a safe stop. This action is called plugging. If the trolley's electrical system is working properly, plugging will bring the trolley to a smooth stop. Next, check the bridge brakes by applying them while moving the bridge. If any of the items checked with the cab or floor controlled crane energized causes doubts about the ability of the crane to operate safely, notify your supervisor or a designated maintenance person. Never operate a crane unless you know it is fit for service. If a problem is discovered with a pendant controlled crane,
be sure to place a warning tag on the pendant until the problem is corrected. After all of the appropriate checks have been made with the cab or floor operated crane, and you have determined that the crane is in good working order, sound the warning, raise the lifting attachment high enough off the ground to avoid obstacles, and then move the crane to where it is needed. As you move the crane along smoothly and slowly, scan the area ahead and around the crane to make sure no personnel or objects are in harm's way. Although there are many kinds of lifting attachments, this program will focus on three. The hook, the bucket attachment, and the magnetic attachment. No matter which attachment is used, proper lifting requires that the operator position the crane so that the center lines of the bridge and trolley are directly above the center of the load. If the bridge or trolley are positioned off-center, side pulling will result when the load is hoisted. Side pulling almost always causes the load to swing, which reduces operator control and may result in injuries to personnel or damage to property. Side pulling may also damage crane ropes and drums. In severe cases, side pulling may cause the rope to jump the shiv grooves, causing damage to the shiv, shaft, bearings, and rope. To prevent side pulling, the bridge and trolley must be positioned directly over the center of the load. When hooks are employed, the quality of the rigging is critical to safe lifting. Rigging involves securing the load with slings, chains, or grabs. Special care must be taken to ensure that sharp corners on the load will not cut into the rigging. Rigging is a complex specialty in its own right and must be accomplished by designated experienced personnel who are familiar with rigging manuals. The operator is responsible for verifying that the rigging to be used has a rated capacity equal to or greater than the weight of the load and that the load does not exceed the crane's capacity rating. If a signal person is helping, the operator should wait until the proper signals are given before raising the hoist. The signal person is responsible for assuring the load is properly rigged and balanced. After verifying that the wire rope is in the grooves of the drum and shivs, the operator sounds the warning, slowly raises the hook to take slack out of the wire rope, and then raises the load slightly off the floor. The load is held in this position momentarily to verify that the load is balanced and that the holding brakes are functioning properly. The holding brakes are designed to hold the load securely whenever the control is placed in the neutral position. If the holding brakes are functioning properly, there will be no slippage. Never depend on the holding brakes to suspend a load more than momentarily, however and never leave a suspended load unattended. If swinging occurs when the load is lifted, the load may be unbalanced and the operator should lower the load to the floor. The rigging must then be adjusted and the process repeated. Once the load is stationary and the operator is satisfied that the load is balanced, he or she should lift the load high enough off the ground to clear any objects in the load's path and begin moving it to the deposit site. Loads must never be carried over personnel. If the operator or signal person sees personnel in the load's path, the crane must be stopped until personnel can clear the area. In addition, operators should never allow anyone to ride on the crane, the load, a hook, or any other lifting device. Because the load must be kept in view at all times, the operator should be familiar enough with the crane's controls so he or she does not have to look at the controls while operating the crane. As they walk along with the crane, floor-controlled crane operators must keep their eyes on the load and the surrounding area at all times. Extreme caution must be observed to stay well away from the load and potential pinch points 
and to avoid tripping. Pendant control operators should make sure that moving the crane does not pull the control from their hands. As the load approaches the unloading area, the operator should decelerate the load slowly, well in advance of where the load will be deposited. This will reduce the possibility of load swinging while giving the operator better control. The load should then be positioned directly over the deposit site and lowered very slowly. In many cases, loads are deposited on a cribbing structure formed of 4x4s, sawhorses, steel blocks, or other materials appropriate to the size, weight, and type of load involved. The cribbing structure is used to keep the load off the floor so the rigging can be removed. As the load contacts the cribbing, the operator should keep the hoist rope taut until he or she has verified that the load has settled in a stable manner. If a signal person is involved, the operator should wait until the signal lower hoist is given before relaxing the ropes. Slings should always be removed by hand to prevent damage and reduce the possibility that the load will be upset. Operators should never attempt to remove slings by manipulating the crane. Cranes with magnet or bucket attachments require special procedures to assure safety. Magnet attachments are used in situations where ferrous metal loads must be moved. Often the loads consist of many small pieces. To make a lift, the magnet is lowered gently onto the center of the load. It is then energized for about five seconds. This gives the magnet time to build up full magnetism. After about five seconds, the operator should sound the warning alarms, raise the load, and begin moving it to the deposit site. The magnet is charged electrically and loses its magnetism if power is disconnected or a power failure occurs. The possibility that power might be lost causing the load to crash to the ground underscores the importance of making sure personnel never walk under or near the load once it has been lifted. At the deposit site, the load is lowered into position and the magnet is de-energized. When not in use, the magnet should be disconnected from the crane and stored in an area where it will not interfere with other operations. Because high current is present, it is extremely important that power be turned off prior to pulling the electrical connection apart. Pulling the connection apart with power present could produce a flash large enough to cause serious burns. Bucket attachments are most often used to pick up and transport bulk materials such as coal, coke, non-ferrous scrap, sand, and refuse. For effective use of a bucket or a grapple, the operator must be careful to keep all of the ropes that are attached to the grapple taut at all times. This assures equal distribution of stress, keeps the grapple in an upright position, and prevents the ropes from snagging on the grapple. To retrieve a load, the grapple is open and lowered into the material until it is buried. The operator then raises the closing line keeping the holding ropes taut until the grapple is fully closed. Both drums are then used to lift the loaded grapple. Care must be observed to keep the weight evenly distributed among the closing ropes and the holding ropes. Failure to distribute the load evenly places too much weight on individual ropes and may cause one rope to wear prematurely, thus shortening the working life of the rope. At the end of a shift, the crane operator is responsible for parking the crane in an authorized area and securing it. Radio and infrared controls must be stored in a supervisor's office or another secure area when not in use to prevent unauthorized access. Switches and keys should be turned off. Batteries should be removed and placed on a charger. 
Pendant control should be stored on dedicated hooks or clips out of traffic areas. If these are not available, care should be taken to store the control in an area where no one will accidentally run into it. Cab cranes are lined up with the platform for disembarking. Prior to turning off the main power switch, the operator should put all controls in the neutral position and turn on the parking light if one is present. The main switch is then turned off and the operator disembarks. Cranes that are stored outside must be clamped to the rails or otherwise held in place when parked to prevent unattended movement and possible damage due to winds. After securing any kind of crane, the outgoing operator should inform the next operator of anything unusual about the crane's performance. This might be accomplished verbally or by leaving a note. Cranes perform so many tasks for industry it would be impossible to list them all. They are amazing pieces of machinery, but they are only as safe as the men and women who operate and maintain them. More than any other factor related to the crane, it is your conscientious and careful work that ensures your own safety and the safety of your co-workers. Never take your responsibility lightly. Never operate a crane in a work situation until you have read the manual supplied with the crane and are familiar with the crane's controls and characteristics and have practiced in an area clear of personnel. Each time you take control of the crane, perform the appropriate pre-energization and post-energization inspections. Never move a crane without alerting personnel and always stop the crane if someone is dangerously close to the lifting attachment or load. When operating a floor controlled crane, be aware of all obstacles you may encounter. Be extremely cautious not to trip or place yourself or another too near the load or in a potential pinch point. Prior to lifting a load, verify that the load does not exceed the crane's capacity or the rigging's capacity and that the load is properly rigged. Always position the bridge and trolley directly above the load center before making a lift. If a signal person is involved, follow his or her signals before taking any action. With the exceptions of stop and emergency stop, which must be heated regardless of the source, only obey the signals of the dedicated signal person. Never depend on the holding brakes to suspend a load more than momentarily, and never leave a suspended load unattended. Always start and stop the crane slowly and smoothly to reduce load swing. If load swing does occur, move the crane in the direction of the swing to eliminate it. Finally, if you ever have doubts about the ability of a crane to make a lift safely because of concerns about maintenance, capacity, the stability of the load, rigging, or any other factor, do not make the lift. Instead, contact your supervisor. As the captain of the crane, it is your judgment that counts when you are at the controls. <laughs>